Bonjour. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Marie? I'm good. How are you, Bertrand? I am in the sun. It's been weeks. Yes. Yeah, we are enjoying very much uh, this just little ray of sun right now. And uh, we are on the sand that is over flooding. I don't know if you can see that. Look at this, guys. There used to be roads on both sides. I and mean, there are still roads, but we just don't see them. They're just under the water. So we are going on with our seri. Uh, so now we're going to do the sixth arrondissement. So yes. for those who are coming here for the first time, we are Mike Pratt Paris, and we are a small uh, boutique agency specialized in uh, travel in Paris. And of course, if you want to do private tours, could be virtual or in real life, uh, please contact us. And now we are on the Pont des Arts right in the middle of Paris. Look at this. Not bad. So the Pont des Arts uh, was often filmed in uh, different yes. movies and uh, it was also the place where you could put a love lock. Do you remember guys, maybe if you ever came in Paris, this used to be agreed where you could put at the time uh, love locks, but it's not the case anymore because it was... Uh, too heavy. Yeah, too heavy. Crazily and didn't heavy. look very good at the end you know it was just like yeah thousands and thousands of locks in one spot that was not a good idea so we removed them and now we can just enjoy the bridge as and it we is. can see the view we're going to switch to show you the view guys right that's what we're looking at the sun a little bit hiding behind the clouds we don't know if it's going to be sunny for the whole tour so here this bridge is located in the sixth arrondissement between the louvre Maybe we can have a quick look at this amazing building that is the Louvre Museum. Starting right here. So the Louvre is located on the first district. We started our series of uh, arrondissement with the Louvre. And on the other side, we're going to see Saint-Germain-des-Prés. But in between, uh, we have a nice view on Ile de la Cité, where Paris started. Hop là. Trying to get to adjust with the sun because we have the sun right in our face. It looks very dark on the Ile de la Cité. Yeah, I mean, we, we walked from there. It was under the, the clouds, but now we're looking at the sunny side of Paris. Yeah, so that's Saint Germain des Prés, and we are about to explore it during this video about 45 minutes, one hour. I just want to show you guys that right here up is the Eiffel Tower. So we're looking south from the river exactly Going and to the left bank right bank to the exactly to the left bank and there is also another building i don't know if you can see it on the video very well uh, that will be located here and that's musée d'orsay so musée d'orsay and musée du louvre are facing each other and there is just the seine river in between okay that's why we are here on the pont des arts because it's all about art here so we're going to talk about literature we're going to go uh, where Picasso used to uh, go have a drink with his friends. Ah. So, yeah, so literature, painting, That, that was the movies. good old days, right? When, <laughs> when we could go to uh, the 6th district to Saint-Germain and have drinks. <laughs> yeah, we're still going to see the cafe and dream about the time when they're going to open again. So, and the building in, just in front of yes. us, um, this, is, this is a very strange building in the sense that no one really went inside. Have you ever been inside? I have been you did? To, to the side here. Ah, okay. There, where there's a, a public library. Oh, yeah. So there is. But not under the cupola. I'm, I'm not. Uh, You're not a VIP. As fancy, yes. So you have, to, you have to be a VIP to get inside here because this is only for the elite uh, of what French is it? people. So it's called the French Academy, Academy Francaise, or also l'Institut uh, de France. And so here. This building is all about French culture, French language. Uh, you know, for example, in French, we always have masculine and feminine. Yes. And for some words, we have a debate. For example, COVID, you know, for the coronavirus. Ah, yes. There is a, there is a big debate. Is it a she or a he? I uh, think at first when it was, when we didn't know too much, it was a he. And now we know it's terrible. It's a she, right? <laughs> I don't know how they choose it, and thank you for the sexism, by the way. Um, but for sure... It's not me! I didn't choose it. I still call it a he. I said le Covid. And this is, this is where they actually choose that. So if it's uh, le or la, uh, it's the French academician that's going to decide that. So that's, for example, one part of their job. Uh, the other part will be, of course, uh, to get rid of old names that are still in the dictionary, but not in use anymore, so they just like get rid of them. 
Um, they also discern prices for the people that are very smart in their domain, could be history, mathematics, whatever. Uh, they are here to say, okay, you are doing a great job. So yeah, so it's uh, like the wise man of French. Of so that, that's for the, the French language yes. academy within. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, a few others. I'm not going to start naming them all because I'm sure I'm going to be wrong. I think there's 70 people here. 70, 70, 70, 70 writers in the yes. French Academy. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's also uh, an Academy of Moral Sciences, which is the old name for political sciences. One for the Navy. I, one of my grandmother's uh, brother was actually part of the uh, really? uh, Naval uh, Academy. Wow, yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah, I was. Uh, I've, I am still impressed, actually. Because <laughs> to be accepted here, first you have to be good, but then you also have to have good connection because uh, there is always That's a vote. The, I think that was the case. <laughs> ah, I see. So yeah, so they elect uh, the, who are the members of the French Academy. And you, you see the name maybe uh, Mazarin? Yes, uh, we're going to try to show you guys that. It's in golden letters up here. And so it says Julius for Jules, Mazarin, who was the last name of a French prime minister. And then the rest, it's uh, Signore, what, what was it? It was a cardinal, I guess the C-A-R-D is, is that it was a cardinal. And he created um, a college actually in here. It was called the College of the Four Nations. Okay. Because it was gathering, uh, I mean, Back then, France was a kingdom, was not really a, a nationality. And so the different nations, um, if I'm, oh, I'm, I'm starting to be a little bit rusty with all of that. <laughs> we miss you guys. I know, I mean, I haven't been talking about that for a, for a year. And so I think it was uh, for different nations um, coming from Northern France. Like there was one from Picardy and then from the Flandre. But basically it was this idea of uh, having a college that is um, open here to, to form the elites for the French uh, administration that will then serve the king who back then was living just on the other side of the bridge uh, at the Louvre. And that's why there is a public library right here. So we can't see unfortunately this beautiful library but you can maybe google it and uh, Bibliothèque Mazarin. It's one of the most beautiful library that we have in Paris. And it's, and it's free and it's open to the public. Um, even if you are not a member, you, you can do it. Sometimes uh, I've, I've taken a, a few guests there. You have to give your, uh, your ID card or something at the entrance. Yeah, it's still VIP though. <laughs> yeah, it's still yeah, it's yeah. like... But, and, and it's impressive because you walk in there, it's a, I mean, it's a 400 years old uh, public library. They have books uh, printed you know, hundreds of years ago. They ha actually have uh, one uh, print of the Gutenberg Bible. The, what? The first uh, book very, published in, uh, in Europe. Very impressed. So now we're going to go uh, just along the Seine River. You see the green boxes guy on the side? Those are known as the bouquinists. And it's where you can find old books, second-hand books along the Seine. That's, a, that's an old tradition that I like. Now we are entering in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. So that's the sixth arrondissement, that's just one part of the six. And we are entering by Quai Malaké. You can see already a little boutique here. The artsy side. Because, yeah, this boutique is for its stamp, so just prints. prints. And yeah, you will see that this neighborhood is all about publishing and painting. Okay, so now we are entering in a street that is known to be Rue de Seine. That's an important street for art because that's where you have most of the art galleries uh, of the neighborhood. Starting just right here. And that's gonna continue along our walk today. So publishing houses, art galleries, um, that defines Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which is the, the core of the sixth district for you, Marie? Yeah, I would say that because uh, but for me, well, it was uh, the time where I was a publisher. Um, it was a long time ago. Before being a guide, I was uh, in a publishing house. That's what we say. So to the publisher here in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. And I used to live here as well. So maybe on the way, I can show you where I used to live if you're interested. 
Yes, always. I mean, you've, you've lived all over the place. <laughs> it's so. true. Yeah, I did, I did move a lot in Paris. Let's have a, a, a final look at the cupola of the uh, French Institute. Yeah, from this side it seems very serious. Yeah, well it is a very serious place. Maybe too serious sometimes. I mean, when they changed Covid to La Covid, I was shocked. But, <laughs> but let's move on. Rue des Beaux-Arts. So after the Bridge of Art, now we are on the streets of nice art. So <laughs> delicate Fine art. Fine yeah. And, and the flag up there? Yeah, Arc the Arc Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Saint so this is because, yeah, this is where you have most of the galleries, as well as the vernissage. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this name in French. I don't know if you, there is a... Ba basically, vernissage is a, is a way to have free champagne and, and treats. <laughs> From a gallery. <laughs> in a gallery, pretending you may be a buyer. I don't know if we can do that anymore. Oh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure, but it, it, it was fun to, uh, to go Francis Bacon. There, there was a big exhibition uh, of his art. So this street is known to be um, the one where all the artists coming from Beaux-Arts, so the Beaux-Arts Academy, the art academy that we can see at the end of the street. This street was for all the students uh, to have fun, probably just to get out. And you had also cheap hotels. Yeah. And there is one in particular that I really like because it's an hotel that was uh, probably the yeah the cheapest and the uh, most gloomy hotel you could imagine uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. But it became something very famous after someone called Oscar oh. came here in Mr. 1900. So I'm going to show you what the I'm talking about. The one with the ram head. Yes, this one. And I'm going to show you just the facade of this hotel that is now closed because uh, no one is coming obviously we don't have any more people visiting paris for now but you can see here on the left a sign telling you that oscar wide came here from dublin i was born there and he came here in 1900s you can see another sign here of his presence what happened is in this uh this hotel is it actually died here so that's made uh, you know, the hotel even more famous. It's not just having him as a guest, but also had to, yeah, to prepare uh, when he... So when he died here, uh, it was uh, known already in France. It was very poor because he just, uh, depending on the money of his wife, let's say for so long, and at one point she just cut, you know... Uh, cut him short. Cut, cut him short, so he had nothing left. And he came here, he was also um, chased by the justice in England because uh, he was also chased by the justice in England because uh, as you may know uh, he had um, a flirt with um, a nice boys from the bourgeoisie uh, from uh, with a boy Ooh. yeah <laughs> so so at the time and it's crazy yeah just a hundred years ago he was uh... yeah also so it was not a um, death penalty or something like that but of it course. but but you had to um, you had to be very discreet let's say about that and, and to go not, to another country <laughs> yeah I know no, I mean it was not because of that that he was um, in prison but it's because he he actually said so, and so someone made um, someone uh, let's say made a trial for defamation. So it was more ah. it was more because the family of the boy said no, you can't the reputation. You, exactly. You can't say that. If you can't be do what you want, but don't talk about exactly. it. Exactly. So okay. at the time, it was not really of making uh, you know having an affair relationship. It was more like to say it to spread the word. That was that was the bad thing. So to ruin the reputation of the boy, that was uh, the problem. But um, yeah, so Oscar White, still very famous in France. Uh, at the time, he was writing in French as well. So and he's buried here. And he's buried here in Paris, but for that reason. And um, in the Père Lachaise Cemetery. Yes, and, uh, and which the, you guys know all about because of the video. <laughs> since the Tour Marie, you did. Yes. Last summer, last fall. It was last yeah, fall. it was in fall. And the. So that means that back then, early 1900, uh, if a, a poor writer is staying here, it means that this is a, a cheap 
this is neighborhood? a neighborhood. Yes, very cheap neighborhood. It's not the case anymore. It's, it's not the like case the anymore. Most expensive. Exactly, and also I think that changed all in twenties. That was the time when it switched. Just to give uh, you guys an idea, we passed by a, a real yeah. estate agency. <laughs> let's let's check out the current prices in Paris. So right now That's here, a million euro. A million one hundred and fifty thousand euro for an apartment that has only one bedroom. Hmm. And here, one million three hundred and fifty-two thousand. But this time you have two bedrooms. Oh my! Okay. I don't think Oscar Wilde would have been <gasps> living in this neighborhood. I can't, uh, I can't imagine then. like a million for one room. That sounds one million one hundred. I guess you can negotiate down to one million. Oh my! For God. only one one bedroom. <laughs> yep. This, yep. Yep. This, this is crazy. This is, this is a bit crazy, but at the same time you have venues like this all over the place. So the fine arts school, it's yeah. still a functioning school. I mean, students yeah, totally. still come here. Exactly, yeah. And to do so, you need to pass an exam. So you have like a contest all over France. So you have to be part of the best uh, to get here. And of course you have the best teachers. And this is still very academic. Like when you come here, it's to learn about the techniques that are recognized, let's say, uh, all around the world. For example, being a street artist, and I'm, I'm talking about that because there's a bit of street art right on, the, on the... So, street art is not yet uh, considered as a you know, fine art <laughs> subject. But um, yeah, so this is still yeah, one of the best schools in, uh, in France. Oh my God. This is the Hotel d'Angleterre. I love this place, but unfortunately it's closed. Yes, but this is this many is, hotels are closed at the moment. This is the former uh, English embassy, and that's very important because this is where Hemingway also came in the twenties. So it's it's important for two things. So as um as the as the embassy of England, uh, this is where Benjamin Franklin came. So I'm talking a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so he came here in Paris, you know, for uh, the independence of the United States. So they prepare all the Traité de Paris here uh, in those walls, but he didn't want it to sign it here because, you know, when you are... Because of the name? No, I mean, no, because <laughs> when you are in an embassy, you are uh, symbolically on the soil that of the country. True. Yes. So he didn't want it to sign it on the English soil. So that's why he actually went a little bit further in these streets um, and he signed it over there. So that's, Are we going to see it? Um, no, there's nothing left from that uh, time, but I can show you the cafe where Benjamin Franklin used to have his little cup, you know, of coffee. Good. So why not? So we could do that. But then in the 20s, in 1921, when Hemingway came for the very first time in Paris, this is where he decided to stay for his very first night uh, in Hotel d'Angleterre. Probably for that reason, probably because he wanted to uh, follow his uh, good fellow Benjamin Franklin uh, in centuries the, apart. In the writing part, in the partying part, in the drinking part, I mean, in the yeah, womanizer part. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he chose Saint-Germain for a very good reason. So in the 20s, this became from the poorest and cheapest neighborhood to the place to be. So everyone wanted to be here in Saint-Germain to have fun. And we're going to see the literary cafe, so Le Flore and the Les Deux Magots. And you probably Magot, know yeah. them already. So let's, uh, yeah, let's have a look at Saint-Germain for the fun part. But it's, yes, it, it's funny because you, you have small buildings, but very fancy at the same time with little statues mm -hmm. in uh, little niches. Yeah, you, can, you can see there is some money in this neighborhood. Um, oh, it's funny, Bertrand. I think I think there is a there is a movie making here, or at least there is a lot of. Yeah, there's a there's a filming crew, and oh, it's not okay, us. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you are seeing uh, behind the scenes. The behind, footage be yeah, exactly. Of, of my private Paris tours, we now have a, a <laughs> staff of twenty uh, big microphones like that. No, no, no that's for uh, next year. Oh, really? <laughs> well, You're gonna make let's, movies now? <laughs> let's 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 dream about it. I like the idea. Yeah, let's go to Rue Saint-Benoît. Saint-Benoît Street. Because Rue Saint-Benoît used to be here for the jazz club. You have one still there. Yes, Daddy's Place. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> the jazz club and restaurant chez Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so in the 20s, when the um, jazz performers came from the United States, they find here in Paris, uh, yeah, some, some crazy attitude, like everyone wanted to party and have fun and dance around and you didn't have segregation like you had in the United States. 
So yeah, it's, it's also... interesting you say that because it's in the 1920s that m many young Americans started to come here to Paris. Yes. After the First World War. Yeah, I think at the time you couldn't really drink as much as you could as you could hear or having fun. Well, back in the US, yeah, with the uh, what was the name again of this crazy idea they had to ban wine and, uh, and alcohol? Prohibition. The, the prohibition. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't say the word. Imagine you... lockdown and prohibition. No, 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 I can't do that. But yeah, it was um, it was an interesting uh, time uh, when the the left bank between Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. And Montparnasse was really a huge cultural melting pot with many young Americans and jazz players, as you were saying. Yeah, so we're talking really about the best one, mm -hmm. uh, if you like jazz, the old style. Uh, so Louis Armstrong came here to perform and it was such a success. You had thousands of people that wanted to attend his show. You had also Digi Lepsi coming, Coltrane came, all of them. And now people are coming for another thing. Um, Relais de l'Entrecôte. Yes. If you ever come in Paris with your family, this is something we're probably going to recommend. Of course, that's one of my favorites. Is it? Yeah. Tell us more about it. It's a restaurant where there is only one dish on the menu. It's steak and french fries. Uh -huh. But high-end steak and high-end french fries with an amazing green sauce. It's the, it's the secret of the, of the house. It's, we can't really tell how it's made, first of all, because I don't know. But I can, I can tell you is that it's a sauce to die for. Really? And you come here, I mean, I think you can choose which dessert you have. But yeah, you have like a, a list of different desserts, if I remember well. So then you in have terms of dish, it's the steak, steak and the french and fries the called fries. the allumettes. So they're ah. cut in very, very short, like tiny matches. I think this is the uh, dessert list. Wow. Yeah, for, for dessert, they, they let you choose uh, what you want. And for wine also. But for the rest, it's one dish. They do it well, eat it well, and it's really, really and good. And it's not, it's not a place where you have to um, put a suit on, right? It's really... No, no, no. It's, it's just casual. chill, casual. You can come I mean, you don't kids. come in short and sneakers, uh, <laughs> but good. You know, you're in Saint-Germain after also, any place you go. Um, but the thing is, they don't, they don't take reservation. Ah. So the good thing is, if you are early dinner people, uh, then it's not too difficult to get a, a table. If you come by eight, then you'll, you'll probably have to wait a little bit uh, in the line. Now we're coming, I feel like we're coming in more in a more high-end part, like Louis Vuitton, we're just on the side. Yeah, we're reaching the big boulevard, aren't we? Oh, Brasserie Lip. Brasserie Lip is a great Alsacian dish kind of brasserie, so you can find choucroute. I don't know if you guys know what a choucroute is. Sausages. Uh, apparently Hemingway used to like this place a lot because the beer was pretty cheap, the food was pretty cheap but good and still the And case. a lot of it. It's big portions at, at the Basque. And we just passed Café de Flore. I really like this place. I not, love it. Not and so I much love for, it in the sun like that. Yeah, not so much for, for eating there because it's pretty expensive. And to be honest, yeah, you don't do this uh, three times a week. No, it's just just something. It's like a little treat for yourself. Sometimes people they they ask us if, as Parisian, we go there, and it's a little bit like the Eiffel Tower or uh, you know or the Louvre or something like this. It's 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 a place where when you go there, it's for an occasion. For example, the occasion of Le Prix de Flore. Let yes. me explain you uh, why there is a book here. And um, this cafe used to be the place where Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir used to come very often. Uh, I'm talking now in the 40s, so during the war, uh, very few cafes were open, and especially because it was occupied by the Nazis, so they wanted to be sure of what was going on. But this was kind of like a little paradise away uh, from the problem of the war, and you had writers coming here often. So since this time, uh, they wanted in the cafe to celebrate writers, contemporary, uh, of course, the writer. So every year there is a prize that is uh, for yeah, new new writer, new uh, published writer. So Café de Flore have, is having one prize. And Les Deux Magots, this other cafe that is just the outside. It's a big competition. It's a big competition. They also have a literary prize every year. And uh, so I don't know what's the best 
if it's to win the price of the floor, Le Domago. I don't know, but in terms of setting, I prefer Le Domago much more. Look at that. Oh, that's so cute. They put that is very, very cute. I mean, we're not allowed to... I mean, cafes and restaurants are closed at the moment, so they have huge teddy bears having fun. That's smart. I, this, is, this is really cool. It's two years and seven. So imagine now, instead of a teddy bear, Picasso <laughs> and his girlfriend of the time, Dora Mar, and that's where they met in Le Domago, <laughs> or Hemingway here with his newspaper. It's I not know. so hard to imagine uh, Hemingway <laughs> as a teddy bear. I think, I think he's the other one out there. <laughs> I think it's the one that is... Uh, is the brown one. Is the brown one? Oh, sorry. Here you can see more. I love the way they put books and champagne. This is this is my life, Bertrand. I want to be this teddy bear. <laughs> I want to read and to drink champagne in Le De Mago. Oh, there is more over there. So now we are getting to the terrace, huh? the beautiful terrace of Le De Mago that is splendid yeah. and just in front of the church Saint-Germain-des-Prés. That's why we're calling this neighborhood Saint-Germain-des-Prés. But let's have a <laughs> last look to the teddy bears. It looks like this one has had a little bit too much of I think this is. I think this is Hemingway. We found a Hemingway. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely <laughs> Hemingway there. So yeah, so in the 20s it was crazy. Like we had also, after that we had Albert Camus that came here. Uh, mm -hmm. We, yeah, we, we had uh, Apollinaire, which is a, a great poet that also came here a, a lot. Picasso, a friend of, of Picasso, friend. one of his best friends. So most of the writers and artists of the time came in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. This was attracting all the best talent in France. And that was kind of the competition with Montmartre. Montmartre was for the poor, not known yet. This was already when you had a bit cool, of success. Yeah, for the cool and celebrities, young celebrities yes. of this uh, literary cultural uh, period. But having had a bit of money, so he could spend his money here. But when you had no, absolutely no money, you were only in Montmartre. So, because yeah. here it, it's a mix of bourgeois building, so quite expensive uh, places, and at the same time, uh, in the small streets, not on the main boulevard, but cheap housings. The Church of Saint Germain des Prés. It's, it is one of the oldest of Paris. It, it That's was what built they say. a yeah. little bit before Notre Dame Cathedral. Yes, in the year 1000, if I recall yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. And actually, the um, the first stone of Notre Dame was blessed by the Pope, and after there was a mass here. So it means that the Saint Germain des Prés Church is older than Notre Dame nearly 1,000 year old. But what I prefer, uh, I love this church, it's a beautiful one. There is a mass inside now, so we can't go in. But there is something just on the side, this statue here. Um, ah, that's the Guillaume Apollinaire you were Alors, telling actually, us Actually, this is a weird thing. So we are not looking at Guillaume Apollinaire face, but it is a monument that is dedicated to Guillaume Apollinaire, made by Picasso. This is a true Picasso that we're looking at. The museums are closed now, so this is cool to be, you know, in front of a real piece of art uh, a in the street. Picasso version of street art. <laughs> exactly. So Picasso decided to do uh, an homage to his friend that died, uh, actually from the Spanish flu. Uh, oh yeah, that was yeah. the big virus. Yes, that was a big virus. So Guillaume Pelliner, yeah, died of it. And um, so to make an homage to his friend, he said, yeah, I won't represent him because that's my best friend. It's hard to do that. So I'm going to put the face of my lover, so Dora Mar, the, the one we just talked about, uh, <laughs> on a statue and I'm going to put that here where he lived. So Guillaume Apollinaire used to live just right here. But then this was stolen. That um, statue here? This, this bust here made of bronze that was stolen. Um, and for 15 years it was missing. The story is a bit tricky. We don't exactly know what happened, but for sure um, a city, a side of Paris in the Ile de France, found it on the field. So someone just dropped it. Probably someone stole it, found it too difficult to move it around because it's so heavy, and just finally just let it in a field. Maybe they wanted to get like in it a back. field, like you ditch it in a field. Just ditch it. Yeah, exactly. On the side of the of on the, the side road. of the road, and someone found a it. A Picasso. A Picasso, but. When they found it, the, the city that found it, they didn't knew that was that important. They just said, oh, that's nice. Let's keep it. You know, it's a nice piece of art that we found here. So let's keep it. It's so for free. 15, Why not? Yes. Yeah, so for 15 years, it was um, 
in a city hall aside of Paris and no one knew what it was until one day someone reminded that they saw the exact same sculpture here in Paris and they made link and we realized it was the real Picasso that was there in the city hall. You are kidding. Yeah, and, and 15 years later, so the original came back here and the other city hall has a copy. Uh, wow. That's why that's, that's you know, nice for them. Yeah, but still, I mean, this is incredible story. So it was stolen, but then we found it. So it's a portrait of Dora Maar made, made by, Pica by Picasso. Dora Maar was his lover. Yeah. In homage to Guillaume Apollinaire, to Guillaume Apollinaire. Picasso's Actually, best friend, who died of the Spanish flu <laughs> right after the First World War. Yes. Where he fought for France. Apollinaire. Yes. Yes. Well, that is a crazy story. Yes. <laughs> You see, you only in Saint Germain. Yeah, you, you you don't have a you don't have museums open, but you always have art. Bonjour. Bonjour. Okay, now Bertrand, we are getting to my favorite uh, area uh, yes. of Saint Germain, but of Paris, I think. Because that's is that is that the one you used to live in? Yes, that's what, that's ah. the. So I'm not going to show you the exact. And you studied around here. I did study, um, yeah, it was more in the Latin Quarter. You know, the Sorbonne is, uh, is in the Latin Quarter. And, uh, oh, uh, but I did, yeah, I had my apartment in a, in a small street over there that is uh, from, uh, probably from the Middle Ages. So, <laughs> I just love it. Yeah, because we are in the very, very heart of Paris, where the medieval city actually started right after the, uh, the church we, we still see here. I'm going to try to show you a little bit of the church by the side. It was an abbey, actually. Mm -hmm. and it was an abbey. And apparently the soil was very uh, good for um, well, just to, yeah, to grow food. So they were very rich here because of that. Because they could sell the vegetables and they probably had more like, I don't know, pork, whatever they were selling. But apparently they were yeah, pretty wealthy. It, it was a huge domain. I mean, back mm -hmm. in the Middle Ages, the domain of the Abbey was nearly as big as the city of Paris. Yeah, uh, Saint-Germain-des-Prés was... Uh, as big as the city of Paris. Yeah, uh, Saint-Germain-des-Prés was, uh, was a town by itself. You can mm -hmm. imagine how big it is. So the, you had to pay a tax, you know, to get inside Paris. But for them, it was not a problem because people were actually coming here. There was a big market at the time uh, where they could trade their own products. And there so were they didn't crazy really... parties at this market. Oh really? You yeah. <laughs> it was it was known to be one of the most uh, how to say crazy party time for students. La foire du marché Saint Germain. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I mean, no. you, you think it's it's an abbey, so it's monks and all. But uh -huh. actually, if you gather here a market, because the monks will make profit from the market. Well, then you have wine coming from all over the place. You are also outside the city limits, so some of the rules don't apply. And to the point that it became a huge, huge problem to have all these uh, students drinking too much, partying too really? much, making too much noise on the monks' territory. So they studied that in the Middle Ages because it's still the case. Still students are coming here yeah. to get drunk. Or oh, maybe it's a bit, you know, I think, more I expensive think we're, now. we're more reasonable now. You think so? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, at least this year. And now we're getting to one of the best place square in Paris. It's cute, it's tiny, I just love it. And for movie making, it's also uh, the perfect, perfect scenery. Because you have this lamppost in the middle. It looks like Narnia, I don't know if that's ring a bell. But more recently, it was uh, in a movie called Fantastic Beasts. Oh. And apparently, Bertrand... I thought you were going to talk about Emily in Paris again. No. <laughs> this, is this is more important, Bertrand. This is where the Ministry of Magic of France um, is taking place, apparently, from the Fantastic Beasts. So if you follow Harry Potter universe, this is, this is the, the entrance the of the... Ministry of Magic? The Ministry, Ministry of Magic uh, in wow. France. Yeah. So, and here, oh, and here you have also a tiny museum that is hidden. And I love this one because that used to be the house. Of Delacroix, yeah, Eugène the, Delacroix. Yeah, the workshop. My favorite painter. Is it your favorite? Yeah, yeah. So, I, if I remember well, with the ticket of the Louvre, you can also come here, right? There's a, a combo, yeah, because the, mm. 
the uh, Eugène de la Croix Museum is, is run by the Louvre Museum. Um, and so it's behind this door. Obviously, right now it, uh, it is closed. But, so it's one of these museums. And there are quite a few uh, of those, which is an atelier museum. Atelier means it was where the artist used to work, his workshop. And that has become a museum de dedicated to his art, but not only, also to art uh, of that time. And so you have uh, quite a few of them. And it's just, I mean, if you're not with us, you can walk faster. Uh, and it's just 10 minute walk from the, from the Louvre. De La Croix was the, the big, big art genius, the big, the, maybe the favorite painter of France uh, in the early 1800s, before the Impressionism started. Okay. And it's a lot of uh, his paintings are uh, about very vivid colors, big movement. It's not about being so strict to the line, but it's already about creating emotions. Uh, he's the uh, headmaster of the Romantic movement. And I think there is uh, in one or two churches in Paris we can see De La Croix. Isn't that Saint Sulpice? Yes, that exactly. Whole one? exactly. Okay, if there is not a mass in Saint Sulpice, maybe we can. Try to have a look at uh, De La Croix. Yeah. That would be great. Now we are getting away from, you see, Fustenberg. That's the name of the place and the streets. Um, now we're getting to this Middle Ages little streets, mostly where I used to live. And I will show you why I love this area. I mean, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, you feel like, I see. You feel like a, a movie star already. I don't know. Is it the wine shop, the chocolate shop, or the cheese shop, Marie? You're going to tell us about this. Do we have to choose, really? <laughs> Come on. So this used to be my street, Rue de l'Echaudet. Yes. You see this long, narrow street. And so I used to live there for two years. Here, oh, sorry. The car coming. So here it's a butcher, you have here a vegetable uh, grocer and then a club where I used to dance a long time ago over there, La Peña ah. for salsa and if we continue that way, we've just passed a wine store, then there's a chocolate store I really like over there, Henri Leroux I just love this place still looks like jewelry boxes I think, gonna, I think I'm going to buy some chocolates, Bertrand. All right. You know me. You know when I see something, I need to go. Okay. So, are you coming with me? Yep. Okay. See you guys back in a minute. Et nous revoilà. Here we are again. With my little chocolates. I'm so happy. You got it. Um, chocolates at... Gaston Leroux? No. no. Gaston Leroux is the writer uh, <laughs> of, <laughs> of the, the Phantom, Phantom of, of the, the Opera. Opera. <laughs> Maison no. Leroux. Maison Leroux. So I put in that in my bag and now we are getting to Rue de Bussy. Yeah, and this is the famous crossroad of Rue de Bussy. B-U-C-I up there. And Rue de Seine. It's a place full of cafes and restaurants. Jazz bands. Is that only on Sunday morning or? I think, yeah, Sunday, Sunday afternoon and Sunday morning, yeah, they, they do some jazz around here. I love this place. And now to and we make some animation, there is, oh, be careful, be careful. There is mulled wine and I love it and grog. Perfect. So do you, do you like that, Bertrand? Do you like uh, hot wine? Of course. Ha. Of course. Well, it's right a bit now, early, it's not, yeah? Yeah, it's a bit early and it's not cold enough. To me, you know, it's when it's really, really cold and snowing, you know, like what we had uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had a, we've had snow. We, we did. We've had snow for a few days in Paris. But that's, that's cool because so more and more bars and restaurants are, are closed, but they are open at the same time uh, for uh, takeaway. Yes, you can always enjoy good food and good wine in Paris, and if you know where take, to go. And sometimes takeaway is just three feet away. <laughs> you, it, it's quite uh, often that in the neighborhood here, you see uh, a lot of people who are actually having a drink on the sidewalk. But we're not talking about drinks right now. We're talking oh. about probably one of the base bakery in the, na in the neighborhood. Yes, yes. This is, uh, this is where we're getting our cakes when we do uh, 
my great Paris uh, booty and uh, and also in between us, you know, in between guides. Whenever you, we're doing things, we're coming here in Tivna. That's a that's a very nice one. Best pastry of Paris. Let's 2020. See. Wow, that's pretty good. First prize at the competition of the best bakery of Paris, 2020. I'm going to show the name up. Tevena, Paris. Yeah, that's that's a good address to remember. Oh yes, and it's not very far from. You remember when I told you Benjamin Franklin used to come to have a cup of coffee here? Yes. So we're gonna go to these streets. Uh, that is my favorite. <laughs> uh, le cours uh, du commerce Saint-André or just what we say ah, yeah the small one like yeah we just, we just call it the passage de l'Odéon uh, but uh, yeah so it's uh, it's like a gallery uh, it is like a hidden street yeah like yeah. a hidden gallery Bertrand behind you we can there are, see there are cars and bicycles yeah but I can also see the dome of la bibliothèque Mazarine yes. Uh, the Institute de France where we started our tour. So you guys can follow uh, follow us on a, on a map. We're, we're covering a small area, but it's a very rich, very dense area, very historical, great food, a lot of art galleries, and tons of history because in here, as you said, the uh, American independence was uh, negotiated, mm -hmm. but it's also the core of the uh, uh, intellectual elite of the French Revolution that was gathering here and meeting here a lot of political clubs newspapers printed at the time this right is after where the they, American one. yeah they invented uh, the uh, the French Revolution here let's say the the, the, the new ideas the new concepts uh, yeah. what we're gonna do when we when the king uh, has no longer power no and longer so ahead <laughs> oh that <laughs> was that came after <laughs> look at that guys oops here we go entering in one of the most lovely places in Paris. It's never the, crowded here. Never. Because it doesn't, it, I mean, it seems like you're getting into a, a private property or something, and actually it's, it's full of little, uh, little shops. Oh, look at the, uh, the sign here of the, of the tea house. La, La Jacobine. Jacobine. Can you tell us more about what does that mean, la Jacobine? If you take the E out, Jacobin was the name of a political club under the French, during the French Revolution. And among the famous uh, members of that club was Robespierre, mm. who was one, not the, uh, but one of the uh, leader of the French Revolution. They were actually meeting on the other side of the Louvre, on the right bank, in an old convent. So they were named. Uh, after the name of the convent. And Jacobin, today, we still use it uh, when we talk about politics in France. It's when we want to talk about a very centralized uh, state. We, st we call it a Jacobin state. Mm. That means all the decisions are taken by uh, a committee. Now, we are getting closer to Le Procope. So, very famous cafe. I already told you about Benjamin Franklin. So this is where he came. You see the date, 1686. This is known to be the oldest cafe of Paris. Wow. And it's not just a cafe now. It's a restaurant where you can get uh, oysters or whatever. Good idea. Sea <laughs> seafood platter. And it's funny, on the side of it, you have some portraits of known men. Now, Piron, personally, I don't know his name, but probably, guys, you will recognize uh, this portrait here and the name associate Benjamin Franklin. And it says he, he, got, he worked in the Procop. That's where he prepared the project of alliance between the French kingdom back then, so with King Louis XVI, and the newly born Republic of the United States of America. That's, that's very That cool. was signed then in Versailles. And you just talk about Robespierre, you have also his portrait here. I, I'm confused here, Bertrand, because it's true that Robespierre is known to be the bad guy of the terror, the one that killed so many thousands no, of people. He's, he's the good guy. But, okay, no. so, so <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, why they choose Robespierre and not Danton and Napoleon? Do, do you think it's because, yeah, there is a more 
uh, to know about Robespierre than this bloody figure that uh, we have in of mind? Of course, way, way more than that. The, the, the thing is, uh, the deeper you go into your research in history, the more you realize that things are not as easy as they seem. And Robespierre has been used as a scapegoat, in a way, to say that he was the only uh, man responsible for all the crimes of the French Revolution, etc. Well, actually, uh, it's not at all uh, the case. So being pro Robespierre or against Robespierre is more or less if you are pro the Jacobin state uh, or uh, against it. It's, um, he's, he's a figure that is appreciated by many. Okay, so Robespierre is not... And hated by many. Yeah, it's, it's not just... Uh, but he, he was not... 100% a bad guy uh, yeah, uh, it, at all. It's it would be wrong to that. say that he's a dictator who sent everyone to the guillotine. Okay, and he was... At the time when they started, uh, it was uh, in, a, in a group of thinkers, uh, such as uh, Danton, yes. uh, Marat, which was a very famous uh, journalist at the time, and, uh, and they were all living in this neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. But Danton was living in this neighborhood. Robespierre was living across the, the river, close to the Louvre. But it's really here uh, that they would meet in the cafes uh, and close to the Louvre in the Palais Royal. We, okay. We've been there with Florent. He, he was um, on another video Florent has told about us, uh, has told us about. Uh, all these cafes during the French Revolution in the Palais Royal. You know what? I'm thinking we should do another video about just the French Revolution. That Anything? is actually a great idea. Yeah? And I think you guys should send us questions so we answer your question about the French Revolution. Because it's such a complex uh, subject that if we... It's, it would be better to have your views and answer your questions. Yeah, please uh, send and us here's in the comments. Dental. Send us in comments whatever you want to know about the French Revolution. Uh, we can answer maybe in the next video. Now we're getting yeah, to the Place Odeon, but there is a statue of Danton. So uh, Danton, com in comparison with Robespierre, the guy, we liked him. It's, it's not, Robespierre was the, uh, let's say, the, the man that was uh, above all and uh, kind of uh, uh, cold and distant, but Danton was the uh, more jovial, kind of funny guy. Yeah, we could, we could say funny, it Funny, I don't way. know, but like more, Ro more popular. Was Robespierre was so strict to the point. I mean, he was known as the uncorruptible. So he was not playing with the rules and he was not making too much... Uh, uh, I mean, you would not probably... You would not have a good time uh, if you spend the, an evening with Robespierre because he's a little bit too strict, too serious. While Danton was much more uh, fun. But he was uh, also confusing public money and his own money. And I see. So it's, yeah, it's, but it's, it's like you confusing. say, it's never white or black. Exactly. But, I, but but you know, I'm not really listening to you anymore. I know, I know, Bertrand, I know. Because I know. You behind you, stop in front of behind Pierre you, you have Pierre Hermé, and Pierre Hermé, as you may know by now, is making amazing macaron and pastry. And I can show you a little bit what is Valentine's, uh, the Val Valentine's Day in France going to be. Um, so macaron same, and macaron again. Exactly, same thing um, as in US. So we're doing uh, uh, little hearts everywhere. But instead of chocolate, yeah, it's true that we can do uh, macaron in shape of hearts. So it's a bit cheesy, but it's fun. I like that. We should make cheese in shape of hearts. There is one, the there, Chatel. There, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, a yeah, very yeah, good that's idea. True. I will rather you know get cheese for Valentine's Valentine's Day. Then macaron. Then, then macaron. Macaron, no, maybe macaron, I would like that. And chocolate, why not? Okay, <laughs> just get me all. Here, the movie theater are still closed in France. So it's uh, it's a bit weird because we can see... Uh, movies, movies that have been here for a year almost. Exactly, that uh, the, the posters are still here, but the movies are no longer to be seen. And now we're getting to the limit between the 6th and the 5th. Yes. So we're getting back to... The college area. Exactly, where we are. We did already a, a video uh, last time. So I think we're going to end our video in just a little street uh, Next here to the boulevard. In the 6th. Well, instead of a small street, we decided to finish this tour. In front of the very big fountain. 
So we are Place Saint-Michel, and this is called Fontaine Saint-Michel. And if you ever come in Paris, this is a meeting point for a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, so very often we have people here meeting, uh, having concert also around the Fontaine. Normally it's functioning, but we are in winter, so they just stop uh, with the water. And this is representing Saint Michael, archangel that defeated the, the demon. Now you see Saturn uh, represented here with uh, wings and it does not look very happy. Uh, and Saint Michael above with uh, a finger showing the sky and of course God uh, here. This Fontaine Saint Michel was uh, originally a project to put Napoleon here because that was made under Napoleon III, you know, uh, the one that uh, was an emperor as well. Napoleon and defeated by Saint-Michel Saint no, or Napoleon? No, 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 no. Oh, actually, oh, that would be fun. No, no, no. So at first, yeah, the idea was to do a, a massive fountain with uh, our uh, Napoleon I uh, being here. Then they changed the idea into the Archangel Saint Michael, which is, yeah, pretty nice. And um, yeah, so we just love this place. So I think it's a, it's a good place to say goodbye, guys. And thank you so much for watching this video and, uh, and following us every week and following us every week if you want to share this video with friends if you want to tip us you have the link below this video and next week um, we'll see if we go to the seven directly or if we pass through a museum so oh. maybe we're gonna do another uh, video which uh, museum is that I'm thinking about Orsay Museum uh, we have this uh, idea of asking the guides whatever they want to show in their favorite museum, we're going to let them. Uh, it's completely their choices. It's a They're free called. card to the Orsay Museum. Exactly. So we will see. Uh, I think Lore is interested. So oh, yes. let's see next week. But thank you guys. Thank you so much. And Cheers. see you next week. Bye. Au revoir.